भद्रंकर्णे विश्रुणुयाम देवा भद्रम पश्येक्षिजत्रा स्थिरंगुष्टुवा गुंसस्तनु व्यशेम देवित यदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृत्तश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्वेदा स्वस्ति नस्ताक्ष्यो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा तो ओ शांत शांत शांति श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्तिद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम सो एज वी सॉ यस्टे दैट दिस उपनिषद बिगिन्स विथ दिस प्रेयर विच वी जस्ट रिसाइटेड भद्रंग करणे भी शृणुयाम देवा दिस इज द मंत्र फ्रॉम अथर्ववेद एंड द रूल इज दैट वेन एवर यू स्टडी इन उपनिषद then you should before that before the study you should chant the mantra to which i mean the mantra of the veda to which the upanishad belongs so here since the veda is atharva veda this upanishad belongs to atharva veda so the prayer is badrang karane bihi shrunuyama devaha what does it mean see you all have that i think prayer is also there in your copies is it there mina yes. ha see ओम भद्रंक यू हैव हाँ वाई दिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वाई दिस प्रेयर बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू बिगेन अ वेरी वेरी ऑस्पेशियस थिंग दिस स्टडी ऑफ वॉट ब्रह्म विद्या स्टडी ऑफ द ट्रूथ स्टडी ऑफ द रियालिटी इज समथिंग विच वी वी आर गोइंग टू इनिशिएट एंड दिस इज अ डायलॉग बिटवीन द टीचर एंड द स्टूडेंट द टीचर एंड फॉर एनी सच एनी सच थिंग यू नो you require ishwara's grace god's grace is required for the speaker to be able to find words find the right word for the right meaning plus for the student also right frame of mind is required for all this prayer is required because you never know you never know whether what you want to do will be done or not you may have all the intentions you may have prepared yourself but still as they say you know there is a distance between the cup and the lip anything can happen so and they say shreyam si bahu vignane in all good works in all auspicious works there is a tendency that obstacles appear from somewhere and so to ward them off to ward them off prayer is required and so always before the study prayer is done and prayer is done by both the teacher the speaker as well as the listener because it is a party both of them require ishwara's grace and what is grace grace is something you know it is not distributed uh, freely it is not just distributed like lucky dip prayer is a uh, grace is something which you have to invoke which you have to earn and that can happen only when 
there is this initiative from our side. When we make that effort, then it is quite possible that we are successful in invoking the grace and that blessing aspect of Ishwara. And we cannot say that we do not need it, I do not care, I do not care, no, because we want to accomplish, accomplish something. Say for here, we want to learn something, both the teacher speaker as well as, as, well as the listener want to accomplish something, what? That we are trying to understand this text, in that also anything can happen. In a place like this, lot of traffic situation that can block you from coming here. So, it is not easy that we can, we can have the blessings of these things. It is not easy at all. So, many variables are there, known as well as unknown, so countless. We are just not aware of the kind of obstacles that are waiting underneath and what, how can we control them? We are not even aware of what obstacles can appear. I am coming and God forbid there can be some accident. How am I going to control? <laughs> I am driving very well, but what about the other person? So, anything can happen. And as I said, it is pragmatic. In that respect, it is pragmatic to pray. To pray to whom? To all powerful. To one who knows everything and one who is all powerful. I am not all powerful. I do not even know what lies in the uh, stomach of the future. I do not even know. One who knows everything, one who can control everything, he is all powerful. He is omniscient as well as omniscient as well as omnipotent. Ishwara is like that. So, even sages, sages acknowledged that prayer is required. That is, this is called Shanti Pata. This prayer which we chant before the study. Is, is called Shanti Pataha, praying for invoking peace. And here it is a typical Vedic prayer. It is said here, Om Bhadrang Karane Bihi Shrunuyama Devaha, where Devatas, you know, and Ishvara also functions through different, uh, uh, different uh, functionaries. It is like you see, in my, in my one body, there are different organs, hand, has power to uh, grasp, legs have the power to walk, eyes have the power to see. It is just one bit, one body, one unit, but in still in this, there are different functionaries which do different things. So, for grasping, only hand is capable, for walking, only legs are capable. Similarly, in this cosmos, which is one body, in this universe which is one, which we call as Virat Purusha, cosmic person, Ishvara. In that also, there are different Devatas. Devatas means deities who have power over certain things. Ishvara has delegated those powers to them. So, to them this prayer is. Bhadran karne bihi shrunuyama deva, o devatas, may we hear auspicious through our ears. See, all the stimuli that we are getting from outside is affecting us. So, here um, the prayer is that, that may you bless us such that we hear only auspicious through our ears. Only auspicious sounds and words and sentences and phrases should come. Then further, Badram Pashyema Akshabihi Yajatraha. This Yajatraha are other groups of Devatas, name of the Devatas, who protect through those Vedic rituals. So they are being addressed. 
Badram Pashyema Akshabihi may we perceive, may we see auspicious through our eyes. What we see also affects us. Sometimes, you know, in the uh, when we are studying, when we are listening, then also if somebody comes and if I don't like him or her, then my mind can get disturbed. Why has he come? And why is he blocking me? Why this, that? Anything, mind is very, very, you know, very sensitive uh, organ. So, the prayer that Badram Pashyema, even, in, even throughout the day, throughout the year, throughout our lifetime, may I see what is auspicious. So, then, Stiraihi Angaihi Stushtu Amsaha Tanubihi. Then, further, may we, with our firm limbs and bodies, may we always sing praises of you, of Devatas. It, we are um, seeking that blessings from Ishvara. That may you, may you inspire my mind to serve you. So, for that, we require what? We require strength. We require firm body and firm limbs. Plus, we have, when, when we want to please someone, then we sing their glories. We sing whatever, whatever we know. With our words, in short, with our words, we, may we sing your glories. We are not flattering Ishwara. What can, how can we flatter him? We don't even know him fully well to be able to flatter. But still, this is our desire that may we spend our time in this manner. Then, Vyashema Deva Hitam Yadayu, whatever lifespan I have, I spend it in serving you. This is the prayer of the seeker. This is the first part of the prayer. Then the second part begins. Svastina Indro Vruddhashravaha. See, even the uh, Upanishads recognizes the need for prayer. Prayer, seeking, uh, invoking Ishwara's grace is required at every step of our life. Because, see, we can pray only when we recognize that I am limited and Ishwara is limitless. He has all the powers, all the knowledge. I am not devaluing myself. But still, it is a fact that this body, this mind, intellect, all of them have limited capacity. And still I have to gain things, especially knowledge. I need a fit body, fit mind, fit intellect. Everything has to be fit to be able to do something. Otherwise, I may want to do all this, but ears are not working, eyes cannot see, mind cannot think, my body cannot sit. And when there is no energy, no vitality, then there is no enthusiasm. So, we pray to Ishvara. Svastina Indra Vruddhashravaha. Indra is called as Vruddhashravaha, one with great fame. He is the king of the Devatas. So, he is and he is supposed to be the deity of arms. So, he say the prayer is Svastinaha. May you shower auspiciousness upon us. So, Indra is praised like that. Svastinav Pusha Vishwavedaha. Pushan. Pushan means sun god. Sun. He is also god. So, he is being prayed that may he is called as Vishwave, you know everything. Sun knows everything. It is in its light that everything is happening. So, it is said that may you also shower swasti. Swasti means auspiciousness upon us. Then, swasti nastarkshyo arishtanemihi. This tarkshya, swasti naha tarkshya arishtane. Tarkshya is the eagle god, Garuda. Garuda is supposed to be the vehicle of Lord Vishnu. And Vishnu, Lord Vishnu comes on which vehicle? On, he is sitting on Garuda, he comes on eagle god. And eagle is supposed to have a very uh, fast speed, you know, like lightning speed he has. 
No, because that is why Vishnu has chosen him as his vehicle. So, we are telling him, Swasti naha tarkshah, arishtan, arishtan emihi means, O oh Garuda, you who possess uh, undisturbed uh, speed and, uh, and that capacity to move from one place to another, such a God, such eagle, may you also shower your blessings upon us so that Ishwara comes in our life sitting on you. Brahma Vidya knowledge also comes in our life. Then, Svastino Bruhaspati hi Dadhatu. Bruhaspati. Bruhaspati is the teacher, the preceptor of all the Devatas. In our horoscope also, you know, that Guru is very important. So, the Guru is the Bruhaspati. So, he is being prayed to as if you also shower all the blessings upon us. Dada, may you do this to us. And then, see there is Shantihi is uttered thrice. Om Shantihi, Shantihi, Shantihi. Means what? There are three kinds of Shantihi? No. What it means is that there are three different areas from where a Shantihi disturbance and obstacles can come. Which are they? First one is Adhyatmika. Adhyatmika from, means from my body, from my mind, from my intellect, means from here this personality obstacle, that is the biggest uh, obstacle. My mind only is my friend and mind only is enemy. Mind only can become an enemy. Our, big, our biggest friend and enemies are not outside of us. It is right here. Body may not cooperate, may, body may not be well. Mind has its own problems even after sitting here. We may not be here. What will happen if when I am going there is lot of traffic? So many problems, you know. Or um, I have not cooked. What will I do? It's anything, anything. The guest will come and what will, I, so many things are there. So, from my own personality, that is, and in this personality, there are many layers, beginning from physical body, to sense organs, to vital air, to mind, to intellect, to ego, so many things. All of them are potential causes of disturbances. So, we are praying that Shantihi. Shantihi means all the obstacles or the disturbances which can arise from this may be, may not arise. So, let there be peace at that level. Okay. Then second Shantihi, again we utter it thrice, no? Om Shantihi, Shantihi, Shantihi. So, we prayed that from here, Disturbances may not arise. It is our prayer. Then second is Shantihi means disturbances which can arise from, which can come from external forces around us. From around us also, there are many, many factors which can create problems. So, may they also not arise. Then third one, Shantihi from celestial level. Devatas can also, there can, my all such karmas may, may get aroused and there can be problems for there. I want to come and suddenly lot of rain, lot of heat, snowfall, so anything can happen. So, may also that be quiet, prayer. What is the guarantee that it will happen? What is the guarantee that Ishwara can stop? There is no guarantee. We have to, we have to have that faith. If we do not believe in Ishwara and that force which is ruling this creation, then this kind of prayer cannot arise from us. But this prayer is there. Even sages always began with a prayer, always. They themselves were powerful, but still nobody is that powerful as much as Ishwara. So, with prayer, this is begun. So, having done that, now we will proceed with our first mantra. 
Come on, let us do that. I am chanting, you repeat after me. Harihi Om Om Ittyeta Daksharam Idam Sarvam Tasya Upavyakhyanam Bhutam Bhavat Bhavat Bhavishyaditi Sarvam Omkara Eva Yach Anyata Trikalatitam Tadapi Omkara Eva See Upanishad says the very first mantra is this Hari Hi Om that is Mangalacharan Again Mangalacharan Mangalacharanam means auspicious They are they are reciting auspicious words Hari Hi means name of Ishvara and Omkara Omkara is also most auspicious So then then Upanishad says what Om Iti Etat Aksharam Idam Sarvam It says see Om Iti Etat Aksharam this Omkara which is one akshara, one syllabled mantra. This omkara is just one syllabled mantra. And Upanishad makes a statement, huh? very profound statements. It says, Om iti etad aksharam idam saram. Omkara, this one syllabled mantra or akshara is everything. This omkara, this mantra is what? is everything. Everything means what? The entire creation. Entire creation is what? Omkara. Which means here the Upanishad is saying that Omkara is the name, is the name for what? Entire creation. Just as there is a name for this personality, Parapragnananda. So, Parapragnananda name stands for this person. Similarly, Omkara. Omkara is the name for everything. In everything, what all is uh, contained? So, Upanishad says, Idam Sarva Tasya Upavyakhyanam. We are going to elaborate upon this. Tasya Upavyakhyanam. Of what? Bhutam Bhavat Bhavishyad Iti Sarvam Omkara Eva. Everything is Brahman or everything is Omkara means what? So, Upanish mantra itself says Bhutam that which is past, whatever happened in the past, that plus Bhavat. Bhavat means present, whatever is in the present bhavishyat whatever will happen in future all that can be put in one name which om bhutam bhavat bhavishyat it is sarvam everything is nothing but omkara eva eva emphasizes eva kara emphasizes everything that was in the past everything that is in the present good or bad is what? Omkara. And whatever will happen in future is also nothing but Omkara. Plus, okay, this is what you talked about. The, all this is within time. Present, I mean past, present and future. All of that is within time, within space. But what about that? which is beyond time and beyond space. What about that? So, Upanishad says, Yach Anyat, that which is different from this. What? Trikalatitam, that which transcends time. That which transcends time. That which transcends space. Time and space means creation. Entire creation is in time 
and space. But that which transcends time and space is also tadapi, that also is nothing but omkara. That is also nothing but omkara. So, the simple word, not even word, let one, one syllable mantra, omkara, is everything, the name for the entire creation. Now, this is, you know, Vedic mantra. How it has come about, we do not know. This is revealed by Vedas. Nobody has written this mantra. It is there, it is there from the Vedas has given them. Vedas is Shabda Pramana. Whatever Vedas say is supposed to be revealed by Ishvara. In the same fashion, Omkara is also, Omkara also falls in that category. Now, in all the, in many Upanishads, it is a very famous fact that Omkara stands for this creation and creation, you know, the reality has two aspects. One is this manifest creation hmm? and whenever you see something, there has to be a cause for it. When you see this, uh, when you see a big tree before you, the tree, you are seeing the tree, but from that what do you infer? The seed. Because without the cause, effect cannot be. This entire tree which is there before you, obviously cannot be without the seed. It is from that seed, you do not see that seed. You are not seeing that seed, it is beneath. But still, the moment you see the tree, you know, you infer the presence of the seed. Even when the things sprout, you know, you know that the seeds must be there. Similarly, this creation is an effect unfolding every moment. There has to be a seed. We do not see it, but has to be there. Cause. What is that cause is Maya. It is called Abhyakta, which has the potential to manifest the creation. See, seed is so small, but that seed contains the entire tree in a capsule form. Slowly from that seed, the tree manifests and becomes very big. But it cannot come had the seed not been there. You follow? Similarly, the cause of this entire manifest creation is what? That avyakta in, in Veda, in Upanishad, it is the, the term that is used for that is avyakta, unmanifest or maya. What? Maya. Maya is the cause from which the creation has come. Maya itself is in that seed also we can see something. But Maya is something we cannot see. It is not tangible. At least seed we have seen sometimes and we know that it is uh, atomic, it is atomic in size, etc. We have seen it sometimes. But as far as the cause of the creation is concerned, we do not see it. We do not see the cause, but it has been, it is inferred. Upanishad says that. Even Bhashyakara says in Vivek Chudamani, Karyanu Meya Sudhiyeva Maya, Karyanu Meya, which means it is inferred from the effect. From the effect, you infer the cause, even though you do not see it. So, the entire creation is Omkara. The manifest creation is Omkara plus what else is Omkara? That Maya, that is also Omkara plus the substratum of all this is also Omkara, which means what? Even consciousness or Brahman, 
which is the reality upon which all this is superimposed is also omkara you follow just as you see a snake before you you have seen that you are seeing the snake because in the dim light you saw a snake right in before you when you are walking in this uh, um, uh, this forest and the um, in the evening late evening you are walking and you happen to see a snake over there but with light when you see then you find it is not a snake it is just a rope but rope looks similar to snake and so this happens that instead of snake or instead of rope you see a snake over there is the snake really there no in reality what is there snake a rope is there a piece of rope is lying there but because of the lack of light in the twilight time when you see you did not see that object properly and so you thought it to be you took what was rope as what snake that happens every many times in our life because of some problem instead of what the object is we take it to be something else there may be a stump of tree but at night i may see a person over there a ghost is there i won't go that side so what in reality is a stump of tree but i may mistake it to be a ghost similarly scriptures say that in reality there is nothing but brahman as we discussed yesterday what is there just consciousness that consciousness because of maya because of maya upon that consciousness we superimpose this creation so what all is omkara this creation with names and forms is omkara plus that seed maya is also omkara plus what the substratum is also omkara which means what the creation with names and forms and attributes is also omkara the cause of it which has the potential for names and forms is also omkara plus the formless attributeless reality upon which all this is superimposed is also omkara how that we will see how that we will see but here this statement is made that omkara is everything omkara in upanishads in vedas is famous as the name for the truth is famous for the name of truth and truth as i said has two things with attributes without attributes with attributes means this creation with names and forms and attributes and functions and what not that is one and the nirguna also how that we will see when you utter omkar this is done with a reason why this is being shown in this manner so that when you utter om what will come in your mind now om is what entire creation so moment you utter om entire creation is covered before you uttered omkara there was silence see there is silence now and now i am uttering omkara omkara oh in that what all has come the entire creation is covered in this name om then i close my mouth om where did omkara merge into S- silence and what is silence attributeless no form no name no attributes silence 
it is not void it is silence so omkara emerges from silence remains in that goes back into that why is this done so that in a stroke in a stroke the whole creation can be dropped when you utter om creation is there when you close your mouth it has gone into maya avyakta and then into silence this is done with a reason so that we can get rid of it it you can in a stroke remove the creation from your minds this is how it is shown now that everything is omkara that we will also now we will do that omkara let me tell you is made of three letters three things a u and ma see when you it is a it is a sound symbol it is the primordial sound it is the primordial sound and when you utter your mouth when you i mean when you open your mouth and you try to create a sound then what will be the first uh, in any language any language uh, so in omkara the first is first matra first feet is a uh, and then in between is u a o u and ma when you when you close your mouth it is ma om a uh, this doesn't this uh, this is the sound for all the languages any child when or any person when they open their mouth and try to utter then the first sound that is created is a uh. and from this a uh, a uh is the basic thing from which all the letters are made a b c d e all of them has the basic sound as a uh. so a uh is that akara a uh is that which stands for all the sounds ha huh? and what are what are the names made of they are made of different letters take any name pot cloth any name they are made of different letters ha huh? in all those letters what is there this sound akara is there the sound akara is there in all the names okay now page attention name stands for the form now when i say glass case this is the word or more than that mobile this mobile name corresponds to what the object mobile whenever you utter a name that name has a corresponding what object when i say prabodh bhai name prabodh bhai has a corresponding person prabodh bhai name table word table has, has along with this word table what goes the object table so whenever you utter a name immediately what flashes in your mind the object object so they are together the name and the object are always together never apart so here what upanishad has done is they have given us the name which name omkara omkara is the abhidhana or the name and who is the named creation the entire manifest as well as unmanifest creation has the name omkara and when you 
utter the name, the named flashes. So, in Om, now entire creation is covered. Okay? This is what is done here. And as I said, Akara, Ukara, Makara. You utter, it remains in the subtle state and then it merges. As I said, Omkara stands for both reality with forms and attributes as well as reality without attributes. The entire gamut of reality, truth is covered by this word Omkara. Both Saguna as well as Nirguna. If you have seen Omkara, you know, it is this, this shape and here this there is this Amatra. Amatra means it stands three matras are there, uh, three um, foot are there, A, U, Ma. And the fourth one is if you have seen Omkara, there is this uh, moon like thing on it. That stands for formlessness which means it stands for the silence from which the word appears and along with the word goes what? Form. Along when I utter the word, the forms also come. So, when I utter Omkara, the entire creation is covered and when I close my mouth, the entire creation is merged and goes to what? Silence. Understood? From silence, creation appeared, remained, goes back to silence. So, Upanishad says that what comes and go, how to, how to find out what is the reality? How to know what is the truth? The rule is, the dictum is, what does not remain, what you can get rid of is unreal and what you cannot ever get rid of is what? Is the truth. Truth, what is the test of the truth? That you can never negate it, never. Never but never. And what is the dictum for finding out what is unreal? That which does not remain, that which does not remain even in your memory, that which does not remain in your conscious, which, which can you can forget. See, that which I can get rid of from the mind which it shows that it is not true. You will say, you may ask as to, even truth we do not remember, but even when I think that all this is there and where is consciousness, I do not see consciousness and you are saying that consciousness is the truth, but even when I do not perceive it, as much as I perceive this object, but still all that this is happening is in that. Without consciousness, nothing is possible. For example, when you see uh, an ocean, in the ocean waves appear, ripples appear, bubbles appear, they appear and go back, appear, go back, remain for a while, go back. When you are watching this play of bubbles and waves, that time what are you not conscious of? The water. You are just watching this game, you are seeing the wave. That time you are not aware of water. But tell me, had the water not been there, could the bubble have been there? Could the wave have been there? Wave is not possible without water, but water is ever there without wave. There may be in the 
in the in the what shall we say in the um, in the deep ocean the waves are not there but still water is there or take another example say uh, a pot made of clay so when you are seeing the pot you are also seeing the clay but you are transacting only with the pot now supposing that pot breaks it's no more a pot no more do you call it pot what do you call it shreds what has gone what has gone pot has gone which means what has gone the form has gone another so pot is not real had it been real it would always that name would always sustain now what has come in its place shreds when the pot was what was there clay was there even when the when you called it pot pot when broken went away but what did not go away clay did not go now you see in the place of the pot you see shreds even then what is there clay is there now shreds are powdered <laughs> now what do you see the powder shreds are gone names and forms are replacing are receding what doesn't come and go this is just an example clay remains clay remains in the example even that powder also is made into atomic size and size and size sizes keep on changing and with that even the names keep on changing so what is unreal what is subject to coming and going what changes name and form changes but what doesn't change what doesn't change clay even when the pot was clay was even when the shreds were clay was even when the powder is clay is this is an example to give you a better example everything shallow everything is reduced to clay but the clay can also be reduced to what water water can also be reduced to what uh, fire when in, in the uh, effect when effect when it is merged into cause that goes back to its cause that to its cause like that see the entire creation we supposing everything is merged into its effect are a cause called clay then that is also reduced to its cause called water that is also reduced to its cause called fire that is also reduced to its cause called uh, air that is also reduced to space now where will the space go space is space also is not there in the deep sleep in the deep sleep i am not even aware of space that also reduce what doesn't go isness consciousness atma so what i am trying to say is there is something which cannot be negated ever and there is something names and forms which constantly changes constantly changes in and through all those changes what remains there is that non changing substratum you understand what i am saying you were a child then you became adolescent you grew up then you became young then middle aged then old who is non change no, body changes who doesn't change the person the atma in and through all that doesn't change so what i'm pointing to is that there is a reality which doesn't change in and through all the changes it remains the same something comes and goes names and forms comes and goes what sustains names and forms is ever there so 
Now we go back to Omkara. Omkara is the name for the creation, entire creation. Creation is a is the named and the name is Omkara. In that everything changes. Each and every name and form, people have come and gone, kings have come and gone, cities have come and gone. What has not gone? Isness, consciousness. And that is the truth. So you say Om. In that Omkara creation comes and goes. But what remains is that silence, attributeless silence, which is called Nirguna Brahma, doesn't change. From that Omkara comes, goes back. But that silence which stands for what? That Amatra. In the Omkara, you have that moon kind of thing. That stands for Nirguna reality. So, now tell me, when you utter Omkara, what is covered? Both with reality with form and reality without form. Both are covered. So, according to Upanishads, Omkara is the best name. Name should be appropriate. You call a person rose and there is no fragrance in that. <laughs> name should be appropriate. Nowadays any names are given. They combine first letter of the husband and last letter of the and then the name is given. Not meaningless names. Omkara is not like that. Appropriate name. Most apt so, Patanjali ji Maharaj, you know, in Yoga Sutra, he says, Tasya Vachakaha Pranavaha. Pranava means Omkara. Tasya Vach, it is named for what? Brahman. See, everybody has pet names, you know, one for public <laughs> and one for private. At home, um, you don't know how husband is calling wife and all the, the, that are all pet names. <laughs> Nicknames, nobody, very private. That is how even Omkara is very private name for Ishvara. He likes it. When somebody calls you by those names, you like it. Similarly, Omkara, when you call Ishvara by Omkara, he likes it. It's very pleasing. Why? Because it describes him entire in entirety. The manifest creation as well as the cause of it as well as the substratum. Silence, what is indicated by that silence? I mean, by that amatra, a, u, ma. We will be doing all this in detail also, but just for, I am asking you. A, u, ma. And that omkara is like this, no? And there is this. Huh. What is that? What does that stand for? Nirguna, reality without form. Unchanging, non-negatable truth. Upon that, what is superimposed? A, U, Ma, which means the entire creation. So, when you utter Omkara, both are covered in a flash. So, when you are in meditation, you utter Omkara and Omkara is allowed to merge. A creation is gone out of your consciousness. And what remains? You are with silence. What is subject to coming and going? What can be negated is negated because it was never there to begin with. To explain that to you, uh, see, if there is a clay pot, then now what is it? Is it pot or clay? I hold a pot in my hands and I ask you, what is it? 
is it clay or pot i say it is clay you insist that it is pot okay two things clay a pot with form and there is clay clay is the material out of which the pot is made and now your uh, your opinion is that it is pot and my opinion is that it is what clay are there two things if pot is also true and clay is also true when we call, give it a name means pot is there we are examining huh, the reality now supposing i take away pot or i take away clay what will be what will you get <laughs> what will you get no no pot was there take it you know you take it i have taken clay now pot is yours in ornaments also we can do is it chain or gold no swami ne ji it is a chain then i take the gold you keep the chain loss will be yours even though not interested in chain i will get the gold follow so are there two or one basic thing this throws light on the reality of the of the truth it throws light simple things like this if there were two then there should be two even when i take away clay if i take away clay you should have pot but when so now even when you call it pot tell me where is the pot is the above part pot there also i have the feel of the clay is the uh, below part pot there also i say it is uh, uh, clay is the side part pot even there what do i feel clay where is pot if if there was understand if there was an object called pot corresponding to the name pot corresponding to the word pot if there was an object called pot we would call it real understand this is little this calls for lot of attention and thinking if there was an object called pot corresponding to the name pot if there was an object called pot then it should remain when i take away clay think of it but when i take away clay what do you get zero so there is no object corresponding to to the name pot understood and when there is no object corresponding to the word called pot what is that word hanging in air hanging in air because there is an object corresponding to clay there is object corresponding to clay but there is no object corresponding to pot similarly same thing applies to creation what is the reality there is no thing corresponding to creation no object what is there is consciousness awareness unfortunately here we cannot take away awareness like clay but in reality only thing that is is what consciousness and what is this thing called creation exactly the same as pot no corresponding object which means vikaro namadeyam that name is there is no object corresponding to name so that name is just a concept which stands on lips 
merely speech, speech, there is no object. And what is there? That from which the name arises, that is there. That silence, that Atma, call it Atma, call it Ishwara, call it Brahman, call it reality, that is there. Can you negate that? No, no, that also I negate. No, that cannot be negated. Can it be negated? Negate it. The ne negator remains. You negate the entire creation. Omkara, I spoke and then it, in, the, in the Omkara, the whole creation came. I, it is out of my mind. But who cannot be negated? The I. The body will be negated. One day it won't remain. Who will not be negated? Consciousness. So, Omkara consists or stands for both. What? The manifest creation as well as its substratum. What a wonderful thing, this Omkara. So pregnant. And of that, when you utter your mouth and you close your mouth, creation is gone. What remains is the silence. So this is what is shown in the first mantra. In fact, only this much is said, what? That Omkara is everything. Huh? This much equation is given to us in this first mantra. That Omkara is everything. Whatever is there in past, present, future, and whatever is beyond time, everything is Omkara. Now, in this mantra, the importance is given to name. Omkara is everything. So, importance is given to what? See, when I say, I am uh, Parapragnananda is this one. So, name is Im given importance. But that should not uh, create an impression even in our mind that named is less important than the name. So, now the reverse equa equation is given. See, understand. In this mantra, first mantra, what is said? Omkara is everything. Past, present, future and whatever is beyond time is Omkara. Now, we go to second mantra. Come. There I will uh, show you how. The reverse equation is given. Sarvam hi etad brahma. Ayamatma brahma. Soyamatma chatushpat. See, now what is said earlier, this is little difficult, but still we will try to handle it and we will try to explain. Earlier in the first mantra was said everything, Omkara is everything. Name is shown as named. Now what is done? Every first word mantra, first words of the mantra is Sarvam hi etat Brahma. All this is nothing but Brahma. Earlier what was it? Omkara is everything. Now everything is shown as what? Brahma. Everything is Brahma. Keep in mind. Huh? First Omkara is everything and now Upanishad is saying everything is Brahma. Which means what? What was shown as Omkara is now shown as everything. And that everything is what? Brahman. First, Omkara is everything and now here you said everything is Brahman. So, what does it mean? Om is what? Yes. Brahma. Om is Brahma. Huh? And then, then what? What is this Brahma? Now comes the Mahavakya, the big statement. Now, what is said? See, everything is, earlier, Om is everything. Now, what is shown? Everything is Brahma, which means Om is Brahma. And now what is this Brahma? Atma. Brahman is not somewhere else in the sky. Ishvara is not somewhere in the heavens, away from us. No. Where is he? I am, I am Atma Brahma. This myself, this my very core, is what? Brahma. Understood? 
first equation was omkara is everything then reverse everything is brahman means om and brahman are one and then what was the last equation brahman is atma see how we are brought here atma is brahman atma is omkara it means that atma is omkara okay and now what is this how uh, now atma is what it has four feet soyam atma chatushpat it has four quarters it is not called feet but quarters this atma has four quarters this is also done with a reason see upanishad takes into account all our experiences nothing is left out we generally think that our life is comprised of this waking hours when we wake up in the morning till the time we go to bed that is what life is but upanishad takes into account each and every experience what the waking hours plus the dream hours dream state plus the sleep state all of that is taken into account in explained so atma what is this atma atma has four quarters which four quarters one will be waking state when i wake up and interact with the world that is one state of the atma which i will explain it is not actually the state of atma but state of mind it will be the state of mind so waking state then second one is dream state third one is third quarter is deep sleep, deep sleep state and the fourth one fourth one will be what turiya turiya means what consciousness which we don't see and in omkara which one da very good that amatra so upanishad will show us that waking state and in in in, in omkara what does it correspond to a a means waking state now through omkara upanishad is analyzing uh, atma omkara is used as a means to explain atma hmm so omkara has four things a u ma and that silence here also how many things waking state dream state deep sleep state and turiya so now when we utter omkara a covers the entire waking state which we'll talk to you about tomorrow then ukara covers the entire state of dream plus thinking the subtle state plus makara stands for the deep sleep state and then comes what the basis or the substratum upon which all three are superimposed so actually the turiya is not fourth it is the one because without that none of this would be there plus waking dismisses dream when you are waking you are not dreaming when you are dreaming you are not sleeping or waking so at a time there is just one state either waking dream or deep sleep state a day dreaming is possible sometime <laughs> but that is also a state but all of them cannot uh, cannot stand other state they dismiss each other but who they cannot dismiss turiya they cannot dismiss that just as there is an actor who in first stage of the first uh, part of the drama comes as a beggar then the same fellow in the second part of the drama comes as king same fellow in the third uh, act comes as what as inspector or a governor but who is he who is he in reality 
actor. Beggar is not the king, king is not the governor, governor is not beggar, none of, uh, they are all different. But in all the three who is there? The actor. Actor is very much present. Upon act, actor is playing the role of the beggar, king, governor. Governor is not beggar, Be beggar is not king, but actor is all the three plus none of them. Actor is all the three plus none of them. So, you cannot say that actor is the fourth one. Can you say actor is the fourth one? No. He is the main one upon whom these three roles are being played. Similarly, Chatushpat, Jagrat, Swapna, Waking, Dream, Deep Sleep and then fourth one. Is it fourth? It is one. That fourth is a count by Maya. Count fourth is due to Maya. Maya means it deludes you. Real is one. One in all the three. And in reality, they are all not there like that pot. Take away this. They won't remain. Understood? This is little difficult, but we will try to explain it even more tomorrow. But today, this Omkara is everything. Then, first equation. Second, reverse equation. Everything is Brahman. So, Omkara is Brahman. And Brahman is what? Ayamat Mahavakya. This is the big statement. Imagine that about which I think I am a limited person, woman, this, that, limited in so many ways. Who is he really? Who is that? Brahman, which means everything. So Upanishad makes this big revelation. That I, I the, the first day, yesterday we said, I am what I am seeking. I am already what I am seeking and by this it becomes very clear that I am Brahman. This is the Mahavakya and that Atma has four quarters. This we will see tomorrow, one by one all the quarters. And we will also see how Akara means waking, Ukara means dream, Makara means deep sleep and Chaturtha means Turiya. That also we will see. But this is how Upanishad is proceeding. Omkara is used as a means to enable us to have some idea about Atma. Plus, one more thing I wanted to tell you is this. That why Omkara? Everybody does not want to know all this. Why Omkara? They just, Omkara is a mantra, very pure, very pious. So, it is, it can be used for uh, Param Brahma as well as Aparam Brahma. Apara Brahma means the creation. By Omkara you can come to know creation also and by Omkara it stands for what? Param Brahman also. And simply even if you do not know the meaning of Omkara as we are talking, you are just, you just chant. Omkara, Om, Om, Om. Even that purifies you, has the capacity to purify. So, that way also meditators meditating upon Omkara without knowing its meaning, but they also come out pure. When you do it for a long time, it works. Why? Because when you utter, it comes from the navel region and then it passes all the other chakras and it attacks, the utterance attacks everywhere, goes to the skull and then from the mouth it is uttered. When it is done for a long time, it has the effect of purifying. These are not ordinary words. These are the words revealed by Ishwara. So, they have a different capacity. These are all Bija mantras. It has different powers in them. So, even if you do not know the meaning, keep chanting and you become pure. And if you know the meaning, 
then what? You are with the truth. So, it stands for both the things. So, this is what is said in first two mantras. We will elaborate upon this tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Om Purnamata Purnamitam Purnat Purnamutachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanta Shanta Shantihi Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Krutau Vande Bhagavantau Punaf Punaha Ishvaro Guru Ratmeti Murti Bheda Vibhagine Vyoma Badvyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murta Ye Namaha Om Shanta Shanta Shanti Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Huh? Yeah, one second. Yeah, one second. I'll just let it turn out. Just. Uh...